Hello lovely people. I welcome you once again to Bright and Clarice channel. Today's episode is to help all of us have an idea when it comes to construction and therefore I'm going to take you through the stages of construction so you'll be aware of when you're building and then you'll learn the terminologies. All right. In your view is my 3D. This is what we call 3D representation or what we call rendering. Rendering. Okay, so your building after the draftsman has designed everything, they need to give you a 3D representation. All right. In your view right now is the ground floor. The ground floor on your left is the hall, the dining and the kitchen. All right. And to your right, we have the I mean, the four bedrooms. One is a master bedroom, one is a guest room, and then we have a family area, and then the corridor in between. It has a kitchen porch at the back, and then the main porch at the front. It is a first floor building, and therefore this is the first floor. The reason for this is to for me to make money, so the ground floor will be for my family, and then the first floor I have two bedrooms detached, okay, so to your left is a two bedroom and to your right is another two bedrooms, okay, both have two bedrooms on suite, kitchen, dining, visitors, toilet and all of that, so you can pause it and then watch it. So once you have your drawing, you have your land, everything is secure, you are ready to build. So before you build, you need a foundation plan. With the foundation plan, they have to do what we call profiling. After the profiling, they have to do what we call digging. After the digging, they have to do what we call erecting of the pilex. After that, we have to do casting of the foundation concrete. I'm going to explain all of that. All you have to do is note it down. You understand? Just note it down. Profiling, digging, erecting of the pilex, casting of the foundation concrete. So along the video, I'll be mentioning them. You just have to tick them. Okay? Now, after that, the next stage is what we call the block work. You understand? The last one, I talk about casting of the foundation concrete. So from there, we move on to this stage where we do block work or footings. We call it footings. And then casting of the pillars. After casting the pillars, we, we apply the DPM. Or maybe we, we call it quota. And you have to smear those kind of paint, black paint, to avoid the moist or the mold from coming. Okay, then filling in the gravels or laterites. Are you getting it? Filling in the gravels or the laterites. All of that I'm going to explain to you. All right. And then after that, once you fill in the gravels or the laterite, we do what we call ramping of the gravels. You have to ramp it. And then after that, plumbing takes place. You have to do plumbing. And after the plumbing, we have to cover the surfaces with the black rubber, which is the DPM or the downproof membrane. Okay. After putting, applying the DPM, then we cast the oversized concrete. You know, that's what we do. We call it oversized concrete. And then we cast that one. So along the video, I believe you've noted all this and that I'm going to be mentioning all those terminologies so that you know exactly the stages that we are in a project. Now, before you begin your dream house, you should have your sand and then your stones. Okay. At that time, I bought my sand at 800 Ghana cities and then the stone was at 1,800 from 2020 to 2021. It was the same price. You need your cement. You would have to provide all the materials. Most people don't know that. See, you provide the materials. The only thing the contractor takes is workmanship. So your focal point should be on the workmanship of the contractor. Now, a contractor will be responsible for carpenter. He'll be responsible for plumber. He'll be responsible for the laborers. He will be responsible for who again? Maybe I'm missing something. Okay, carpenter, still bender, yes and plumber and then electrician most people would like to go this way if not you can have them separately a mason's work is a mason's work so you deal with the mason separately you deal with carpenter separately you deal with steel bender separately you deal with plumber separately so you can have a fair idea as to how much they are charging so now this in your view now we've dug the foundation they've erected the pillars you understand? So erecting of the pillars. So the pillars have been positioned. Most people, that's how they do it. You need to put in the mesh and then the pillars are erected, positioned, which will be for the first day. 
And then the second day, they come and cast the entire concrete in the whole ground, you know, as you're seeing. As of now, in your shot right now, these are just the pillars, okay? So once you're given your foundation plan, you should know the total number of pillars you have. Maybe your four-bedroom house, you have a total number of pillars, maybe 25 or 30 or 35, depending on the design. Are you getting it? All right. So now you can see that the footings or with the foundation concrete, these are the terminologies they have been casted. The first erecting of the pillars, now casting of the foundation concrete. Now once casting of the foundation concrete is done, from here we have to do what we call block work or footings. Are you with me? We have to do what we call footings. So this stage is completed. Casting of the foundation concrete is done. Erecting of the pillars. Everything here is done. Now we need blocks. Okay. So here you should know the, the amount of blocks that is required. For me, 2,500 blocks is okay. Mostly for the foundation work, people use around 1,500, 1,600, or even 1,700 for the footings. Are you with me? Yes, so you don't need that too much of a block. So if you have a 2,000 block on the site, it should be able to do all your foundation work for you. There might just be a few blocks remaining, depending on the structure that you have. If your structure is huge, you need a large sums of blocks. It could be 3,000, it could be 2,500 blocks. Are you with me? So yes, so you need to take charge of your building. So as I'm guiding you through now, you should know. So erecting of the pillars are done, casting of the foundation concrete is done. Now we need to lay our blocks. Now you, from here, you need the blocks, the sand, and the cement. Okay, you need that one. So as you can see, the footings, this is what we call footings. The footings work or the block work has been done in all the foundation. They will come up to maybe four levels. When I mean four levels, you need to count the blocks, how many blocks have been stuck on top of each other. So you start counting. One, two, three, four. Some people come up to even five. Why? Because they want to raise the structure such that when it rains, water does not come into your room. Your building height should be a bit, you know, higher than that of the main road. You understand? So you check where your, 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 your plot is situated. You check the level of your main road. And then the road in front of you or behind you, you need to check that one. So that you raise your building higher than that of the road. You understand? So that when it rains, the water will dash away to the road, but not from the road to your house. Are you getting it? From here, the block work has been completed. Okay, now we can apply the DPM or the quota, you know, by smearing those black paint along this whole thing. In my case, I didn't apply that. You understand? I didn't apply that. So probably near in the future, I have to, you know, come back, dig along the edges and then apply those downproof membrane okay so now we have to fill in the gravels you understand so the gravels were poured in we brought about six strips of the 22 cubic track and then a, a caterpillar has to you know fetch the sand and then pour it directly into the the footing work so as you can see in your shot right now it has been you know, spread along all the areas and filled in properly. Are you getting this? So from here, you can rent a, a ramping device or a machine to ramp it for you, okay? In my case, I didn't rent any of that. Okay, after pouring in the gravels and then leveling it up, we allow the rains, you know, to pour on it and then it sunk by itself. All I did was what we call the German concrete. I didn't, you know, go ahead straight away by doing the oversight concrete. From here, the plumber has to come. You know, plumbing work has to take place. You understand? So in my case, I did all the plumbing works all right. But instead of me to, you know, cast the entire surface with the concrete, I didn't do that. I only casted the concrete at the edges where the blocks will be laid. Are you with me? 
yes so once we get to this stage you need another set of what stones initially i use one gravel and then one trip of a sand for the for the foundation work now i'm going to the next stage so in your shot is my contractor okay mr richard and from here we are planning on doing the plumbing work after the plumbing work we're going to do what we call the german concrete because i didn't want to rent the machine for ramping it was for me i didn't want to do i want the entire structure to sit naturally because i was not in a hurry yes perhaps some people want it quickly so they have to rent a ramper to ramp it for them they pour so much water in order to sink the sand are you with me but in my case i didn't do none of that all i have to do is allow the sand to sink just by the people walking on the surfaces up and down you know that alone was enough and then the rains will come on top so here i'm going to do the german concrete so where the blocks have been you know exposed all the blocks areas will be exposed and then we'll cast a little bit of concrete on the surface now before that there's something we call the ground beams okay ground beams you will see i will explain the ground beams for you so that you will understand ground beams are really good in helping the building in when the building is settling down completely because after some time your building will settle down it will sink and therefore you need to do a ground beam so that it will prevent cracks from you know coming up all the way to the building so in your shot you see this is what we call the german concrete the german concrete you cast a little bit of concrete along the edges where the blocks will be laid had it be that we are not doing a German concrete, the entire surfaces will be covered with concrete. And that's what we call the oversized concrete. The entire surface will be covered with concrete. And that is what we call oversized concrete. But at this stage, this is what we've done. I have done a German concrete. Now the contractor is explaining the plumbing works that has been carried out. So all plumbing works should be done from here after the gravels have been poured in and then you have the money to do your ramping then plumbing works will come after the plumbing works they have to do what we call the ground beam to put an iron rod maybe in a four set of iron rod you can see the iron rod can you see the iron rods yes there's iron rod all over at the edges okay so plumbing work is done you hear most people put the black rubber on on the surface they laminate the entire surface with a black rubber in my case i didn't do that i with me i didn't put the black rubber so all these are many factors you need to factor in that may make your building cost go a little bit higher because i was considering my soil okay the environment which i'm building okay i realized that i will not be affected that much but hey nonetheless i have to apply that later now so I will do that at the edge, okay, along the edge of the entire building. I'm going to dig back into the foundation and then apply the waterproof, okay, and all of that in order to safeguard myself in the future. All right, so plumbing work from here should be completely done. In most cases, you can even do electrical works from here. Electrical work, what I mean is where you're, in case you have an electrical room, you have to lay a pipe that will come underneath and then you put a rope in there such that you can pull your armor cable, you know, efficiently. Are you with me? So look at the edge where the contractor is working. Okay, you'll see an iron rod on all the edge. You see on your left hand side on top of the blocks, you see the iron rod. That is what we call the ground beam. Ground beams are, helps the building from cracking when the building is ready to sink down because after the building after some time it settles down are you with me so the ground beams are very important some people put the iron rod on the entire surface and that's a lot of money okay you can just put them along the edges of the the, the block work along all the four corners you can put the ground beams there and then the center of the uh, of the building the ground beam should go in all those areas are you with me so all the bathrooms and then the toilet all the piping work was done by uh, my contractor mr richard okay yes 
So he did everything from, from beginning. Everything was done by the contractor. He was responsible for the plumber. He was responsible for carpentry works. He was responsible for steel bender. Are you with me? He, he did. So all I have to do was just give him the money based on agreement. You understand? So if you watch my episode 8, if you haven't watched that, I, I encourage you to watch my episode 8 where I talked about the cost of building. Now, the cost of building, I categorized my building into three phases. And up to this stage, I called it phase 1. Okay, this is my phase 1. And in my phase one, my total cost was barely around 30,000 Ghana cities. That's at 2020, in the year 2020. Are you with me? Now, adding the downproof membrane and other few things, and then looking at the cost of blocks and other stuff, we can estimate around 50,000 for your foundation work, around 50,000 Ghana, depending again on the size and then all the things that you put in place in your building. Are you with me? You can budget around 60,000 depending on the capacity. If you have a garage and a four bedroom, you have a laundry room and you have all of that, you can, you know, you know, categorize and then say, okay, around 60,000 Ghana cities should be able to do that for you. Now, this, as you see, is what we call the superstructure. You know, after the German concrete has been done, then, you know, footing work again begins, which is what we call the superstructure. Are you with me? The superstructure, again, you can count the number of blocks that should be laid. It should be about nine blocks when you count it. So you can pause and then count the blocks. It should be what we call the nine cores. After the nine cores, then a lentil beam will come across on top of all. We will cast the concrete on top. So you can see he placed a block on top of where the pillar is in order to get what we call the top level. Are you getting it? So he's getting the top level so that the whole building will be uniform. Are you getting it? So you can pause from here and count the number of blocks all the way to the top and you will get nine cores. Blocks have been shortened in terms of sizes recently. So some people have to lay up to 10 courses. You understand? Up to 10 courses, then your lentil beams will come on top. After the lentil beam, then another three courses will come. Some people go up to four courses in order to increase the height of the room. In case you're having a massive POP, a ceiling fan and all of that, so that you can have enough space for proper ventilation you understand so this is my hall this is how my hall looks like so i have the hall and that of the dining in one place okay and i have that small area where mr richard is standing now okay heading towards the kitchen but in my recent you know update i have closed that area because i thought it was not necessary so i have closed that area because i can go to my stream right hand side from here and go to the left and at the same time I can go to the kitchen. I thought it was okay for me to just go through that narrow space and then head to the kitchen. You understand? But then upon several consideration and deliberation realized that it was not necessary. I could go from where he is standing all the way and come to the hall. You understand? And that space was not enough for me. So that's what I did. I have always loved this contractor from beginning, you know, when he started my project. He was very honest, sincere, so transparent, and he always gives me videos of what he was doing. But at a point in time, when I introduced my in-law and the plumber, Mr. Frederick Owusu, for them to also take partake in the project and then know exactly what is happening there so that, you know, I don't just get away just by believing the contractor too much, uh, Mr. Richard did not like it. He got pissed off, he got angry, and then he stopped giving me update. And then, you know, every time he's, he was picking on something, and this is that, and this is that. So I realized that, no, I need to keep an eye on him. Even though I trust him, I need to keep an eye on him. But at a point in time, I have to let him go because he was becoming unbecoming, yes. I think he, he became so arrogant. As, aside that, 
He was one of my finest gentlemen when it comes to con 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 construction. He's so good. I just love him. I just love him. Okay. So we headed from our kitchen. This is the visitor's room. Okay. If you haven't watched this, you can watch my episode 6 and 7. You will see the entire construction that have been lifted up. Okay. In this guest room, I have a bathroom within. So that's the portion. And once we cast the concrete on the floor, he's going to demarcate that bathroom properly. You understand? As of now, they are still working on the surfaces of their gravels so that it will be compacting. And then when it rains, the rains will also be pouring on top. I don't have to go and buy a lot of water with a tanker to come and pour there. You know, those you are you are forcing the system to 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 sink, you know, by force. And you need an ample time for, for the gravels to settle. You understand? And if you don't do it properly, you know, you cast the concrete and when it's, it settles properly, you, just, you, see, you, you will hear a sound when you're walking on, on the floor because there had been a hollow underneath the concrete and that of the gravels. Okay, so that's my, my, my corridor. Okay, and then to where he's pointing, you have two bedrooms there and then in the middle I have a toilet and that of a bathroom It's a common toilet and a bath for those two bedrooms because I did that for my kids you know yes I believe that the boys will be on the left and then the girls will be on the right and then they can have a common bath I mean recent time I feel as though I could have made it all en suite for them because there is enough space I could have you know created their own separate bath and toilet for each room but I'm thinking of that but then as of now the entire structure has been lifted up already I don't want to break any walls and then you know, go back to the beginning again you understand yes so that's it so there's a one bedroom here as I've indicated I think this is my master bedroom yeah this is my master bedroom okay that's my washroom over there Okay, so here, everything as you've seen is what we call the super structure. So kindly note it down. Where he's pointing is the family area and then heading to the left, that is the corridor, going back towards the hall and that of the kitchen. So you get the whole idea of my design. If not, you can pause and then watch the, the, the plan which I showed earlier. And then you can get a full understanding it's a simple design and i did that based on what i have planned okay yes and what i want to do on the top as well it is strategic i could have just put up a big house all for the, just for the family but i decided to to do it this way strategically for generational income and i'm comfortable with this one i already have another project that i'm you know, undertaking at a place called Ashalaja, which is also a two-bedroom detached. But I'll be sharing that with you sometimes later. I have uh, that project have been kept on hold due to financial constraints. But then I will share that with you sometimes later in my next video. Perhaps I will just give you a glimpse of where I have gotten to or exactly what I'm doing over there. You understand? So overall, the whole blog work have been done. Now, for this superstructure, I use one trip of uh, sand and then one trip of the stones for, for all of that. Cement, as and everything, if you go and watch my episode 8. Episode 8, I give details on cost of building. You know, I, have, I broke it into three categories. Phase 1, which is the foundation. Phase 2 is a superstructure. And then phase three is what we call the decking, you understand? So from here, they're going to cast the lentil beam on top. As you can see, the lentil beams have been casted and then they are adding an additional three blocks, okay? And in total, when you count the blocks, it should give you 12 layers of blocks, 12 courses, or you understand? We call it 12 course, are you with me? Some people can go up to 13 course, depending on the height they are requiring for they have to want to do a ducting a ducting air conditioning yes you need an ample space at the top in order for you to be able to do a ducting air condition 
are you with me so the total blocks that i used for the superstructure was let's say 2700 blocks mostly they say 2500 but definitely you need to add a little bit because some are broken you know some are used for other things and then they, they they create a bench out of it they will stand on it and it will break so you can make it around 2700 blocks and it should be able to give you your your complete four bedroom house are you getting it yes it should be able to give you depending again on the design that you, you can estimate around 3000 blocks and it will be able to give you that as well if you're having let's say a ground floor the hall and then a guest room and then the kitchen alone visitors toilet and then on the top you're going to put a three bedroom and that yes 3500 blocks should be okay for you and you'll be good to go are you with me yes so as of now we left the entire you know building for almost about six to seven months after the lentil was casted all the pillars casted and everything was done i i was financially you know <laughs> broke i needed to save some money for at least that's seven to to eight months and then come back so you can see that the entire gr gravels has compacted properly because it rained and rained and rained and look at the entire place we have to clear all of this and then begin our construction are you with me yes so everything has compacted properly once they remove all the weed you see look at the edges you see all the edges have compacted properly if you're in a rush and you poured water you will not see this but after you have casted the concrete you see there'll be a space between the concrete and this and the gravels look at the edges it has sunk properly and the structure is sitting on the block so that there is no issue okay this is the family area heading to the master bedroom okay so this is the master bedroom to your left is the washroom and that is my room yeah this is all i want i don't want it so big 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 no it's okay for me all right and this also is okay for me all right so here because the entire plot was fenced when i bought it okay i needed to create a gate by myself so i have to break this wall all right the plot was already fenced it was a two plot and i bought one plot from the owner so i had to do this i have this is my service road so i did the gate i constructed the gate by the service road on the other far end over there that's where the main road is but i don't want to break that wall yet i want to wait okay so this is my porch as you see the whole place have been cleared okay and then to your immediate right this is the visitor's toilet the block work is yet to be completed this whole area is a lobby to your left and that is your hall okay you see how the the hall is is quite big and then the dining will be at the corner here okay and then heading straight to your left we head to the kitchen look at the edges of the block on the ground okay that's the kitchen and then going straight to the other rooms to this side is the visitor's room all right that's the visitor's room so you take this corridor and then you head straight to your left you have two bedrooms here one on your right which you're seeing right now okay and then one will be on the extreme left hand side in the middle is the toilet and the bath which will be divided later so that's another bedroom okay they all have wardrobes in them they'll be done this area is a family area just for myself and my wife sitting there and perhaps the family and this is the master bedroom are you with me so this design was again strategic that's why i put the topic strategic planning okay once you're planning yes i know most people want to plan their dream house and do that plots are very expensive these days so once you get the opportunity of a prime area and you you buy a plot at some billions of you know ghana cities or even dollars kindly utilize the plot wisely yeah the land you have bought but the sky belongs to you you understand so you utilize the sky properly 
Yeah, some people say, oh, I don't want to stay in the house with tenants. And uh, no, you're not going to stay with, you know, that kind of multitude of people. If you have a flat, everybody's going to be in their flat. Okay, if you go for Airbnb, you know, people will come and go, come and go. And it's good. It keeps your house lively. You have people coming in and going out, you know. It, it makes you more happier than you living in the house all by yourself, completely empty. That is my opinion, though. Yes, you can later have your own privacy, a big house all by yourself later on. But once you're older and you're building, I understand, you have to build your, your retirement home. Yes, but this is for the young ones that are upcoming. You can invest, and that is my intention to invest. I can. So as of now, we are casting the oversight concrete bit by bit, you understand, because the ground has been leveled properly, the sand has sunk, so we decided to go with the oversight concrete. So this is the oversight concrete which was supposed to be done before the superstructure, but we decided to do just the German concrete and then later when the sand had sunk properly, we can come and do the oversight concrete. So now this is what we have done. So all the rooms will be screeded with concrete and that is what we call the oversight concrete. The entire floor will be casted. Are you with me? Yes. So again, the cost of the superstructure alone, I think I was around 35,000. The foundation work to where we pour in the gravels, okay, up to that level where he did the plumbing work and then the ground beams and then did the German concrete, that portion was around 28,000, but I ran it up to say 30,000 as of the year 2020. So if you're in the project right now, you want to, you can estimate around 50 or 60,000 looking at the prices of the goose materials and everything. And then also it will depend on the size of your building. So consider mine, this is everything ground floor, four bedroom house. Okay. Yes, I have, this is the kitchen. I have there's a kitchen porch where he's standing he's heading the kitchen porch to the back of the building and in the other side i have the kitchen store are you with me so all these you need to factor and see if you can estimate such an amount maybe yours you just have the hall and then one room and then the visitor's toilet on the ground floor the remaining build structure or the three rooms is at the first floor you can still budget the same amount sixty thousand yes or 65,000 are probably looking at the prices of blocks in cement, cement in particular. Are you with me? Yes. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't spend that much. Now here I have need to partition the plot because the entire four corners have been fenced, but in the middle it was not. So I had to do that all by myself. So my contractor had to, you know, do that for me. I think I needed to curve this, the camera yeah so that's it that's just another portion so here the bathroom of the guest room was being demarcated you understand the bathroom of the visitors room was being demarcated so that we have the bathroom and that of that are you with me so everything i did was a step by step so i have let's say a hundred thousand ghana cities if i have a hundred thousand ghana cities i should be able to build my four bedroom house from foundation to my lentil are you getting it i should be able to build my foundation to lentil with a hundred thousand ghana cities even at this current state now okay it depends on how you budget your stuff <laughs> i i budget everything carefully you understand so i manage everything accordingly the stones should be quarry dust it should be six inches block i get no shortcut anywhere are you with me yes everything should be done properly so you should know that when a mason lays a hundred blocks it constitutes to two bags of cement every hundred blocks constitute to two bags of cement are you with me so 100 blocks is to two bags of cement and therefore if you have 3000 blocks how much will how much how many cement would that be so you multiply 3 by 6 i get me so you need 60 bags of cement 60 bags of cement will do a 3000 blocks for you 
Don't let the mission say, oh, mommy, 200 bucks. No, 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 no. When they say that, you should know. Tell them, calculate it, mommy. I didn't know we here 200 bucks. You know? Like I'm saying, every 100 blocks constitute to two bags of cement. Two bags of cement. And therefore, 3,000 blocks will constitute to how much by how many bags of cement. You multiply 3,000 by 2. Okay, 3,000 by 2 divided by 100, you should be able to get your value, which is uh, 60 bags of cement. Are you getting it? Yes. So, I am always calculating everything. For the pillars, when you're casting the pillars, you can even use 20 bags to cast your, your pillars and that of the lentil, depending. I can say maybe 30 bags will also be enough if you want it to be very rich. Are you with me? Okay. When it comes to the iron rods, you can even calculate that is that is the most simplest thing you can even calculate. Okay, so your contractor or the draftman should give you a foundation plan, and with the foundation plan, he will tell you the number of pillars that are available. Okay, and I'm going to do another video to explain to details how you can calculate your iron rods based on the number of pillars you have so that a steel bender cannot come and say oh buy two ton of this buy three ton of this and buy four ton of this everything ton 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 and you end up losing all your money and you can you can only see a small amount of iron rods are you with me yeah if it's a decking i can even do that you can even go step by step but that is for a higher people to understand but for your own four bedroom house man you should know every step of the way be in tune with your project are you getting it yes so you can see on top of the lentil we have two courses okay yes because of the the size of the block are you getting it yes the decking is going to come so we didn't want to go that higher because the, the decking beam will also add another concrete over there so this is the two bedroom on the right and the left. This is their toilet and bath. Are you with me? This is their toilet and bath. So if you haven't watched my episode one up to seven, kindly go back and watch episode one up to seven. You'll see all that I've explained right now. You'll see it in stage by stage. Stage by stage, okay? Everywhere the blocks have been laid up. All to, so as of now, I'm only waiting for the decking. Decking. As of now, I'm only waiting for decking. And I needed to save some money as well. Are you getting it? So I will take you there and then we will learn about that in my next episode for the decking. Thank you for watching. God bless.